Hi and welcome to Defemoremba, your daily ephemera inspiration in December. Today it's day 12 of this December daily series and on our prompt list there's Bird and Pocket. My name is Luise Heinzel. Welcome to my channel Junk Journal Art. Nice to see you here. In collaboration with 49 Dragonflies, I'm showing you some really fun and easy ways to make your own Junk Journal ephemera out of really basic supplies. I would say every one of us has a little bird. <laughs> I mean, in our head, there's a little bird. <laughs> Because, you know, when you are creating junk journals and do this crazy stuff all day long, then, of course, you have to have a little bird in your head to manage all these things. <laughs> But those birds in our heads, we can't glue to paper. So we have to find some other resources where to get some birds for our project for today. I have um, put out some of my really favorite bird books for today so this one here that you can see here is a really thin one but this is so cute look at these beautiful illustrations so that's a german book but perhaps you can write the title into google and then you can find it there If you don't have access to bird books or you don't want to buy a whole book, then of course you can also use some digital printables. These birds that you can see here come from my Etsy shop. These are the fuzzy cut birds. Um, and the good thing about a printable, of course, is that you can print them in different sizes and make them match to your project. I have a little goodie for you today. So this digital item can be found in my Etsy shop with 30% discount. The link is down below in the description box. So I wanted to have a little gift for you. So if you don't have bird books that you can um, print out your own birds and use them um, and that everyone can afford them. So perhaps that's a little surprise for you. I want to make something like a little bird house today that's at the same time a pocket for this plan i have chosen a junk journal page um, that i want to use later to you to glue them on um, you can just fold a paper um, that has the size of your usual junk journal page or of course you can take your junk journal and just measure with your eyes how big your little bird home shall be I'm using some book pages as the base and here you can see me just folding one of the edges and then cutting this little overlapping thing here so that this looks like a little birdhouse. Uh, I know until now you can't perhaps can't imagine um, how this will look in the end but I promise you this will be really really cute in the end I'm really in love with my own idea <laughs> I have to say it's a little bit arrogant I know but when I thought about this I had this in my mind for a while and I thought that could be a really cute and perhaps a little bit unusual way to make a pocket for a junk journal depending on the side where you want to put this little house of course you have to fold the page in the right direction so i'm showing you um, two um bird houses pocket thingies in the one direction and this one i'm folding into the other direction so um that you have the possibility to put it to a right page of your journal or a left page of your journal because this little house has to go into this edge of the page later When I have my base here, um, I would like to decide what to use to put it on top as some kind of a collage. Um, so I'm taking out some uh, ledger papers. So these are some original ones. Of course, you can also use some copies or printables as well. There's a ledger paper printable in my Etsy shop as well. If you want to check that out, the link is down below in the description box. To glue my paper scraps down, I am using some Mod Podge. Of course, you can use any glue that you have at hand, but I would like to recommend that you use a glue that is waterproof. Because in the next steps, I'm using some other mediums 
and a glue stick for example would be not such a good idea for this step because if you use water or water-based mediums on top of a glue stick uh, glued piece of paper then the paper will come off and the paper will get really really wavy and that looks not so beautiful i will just glue these scraps down and after i've done that i will seal the whole thing with mod podge again If you don't have access to ledger paper, of course you can use any other scraps that you have in your stash. These are just some leftovers from some previous projects, some printables um, that I have cut to the right size and this is left over. So you can use nearly anything that you have. Some junk mail thingies also would work really well. So um, I'm tearing these and gluing them down to my house as well. When everything is really, really dry, you can start cutting the overlapping pieces here. As you can see, I did my collage really, really roughly. And then I'm just cutting this because this is the easiest way for me. Um, and this way you can get really straight edges to this pocket house thingy um, because you can use this book page as a template to a cut straight uh, along there um, and with some scissors that's really easy to cut because yeah it's only paper and glue so it's really easy of course you can use your um, paper trimmer as well for this step and here you can see how different these three bird houses look now i want to have them a little bit cohesive so i'm trying to yeah put some mediums on top um that make them still different but cohesive at the same time you will see in a second what i mean for this first house i'm using just some white gesso and a paintbrush and i'm applying this here so that it looks like little bricks um if you don't have gesso you can also mix the same amount of white acrylic paint and a clear drying craft glue then you will have something like gesso um, you can also use pure acrylic paint but i would not like to recommend that because this acrylic paint dries really uh you know glossy plastic key <laughs> i don't know how to explain that and the um 
wet mediums that we want to use in the next steps would not stick so well to normal acrylic paint than to gesso. On top of this little pocket I'm trying to get um, the imagination of a roof. Mm, I'm just applying some white gesso here so that it looks like there's laying snow on top of this little house. And of course you can also um, make a black line or a brown line or something like that if you don't want to have this wintry look but we are in december so i have decided that i want to have something that looks a little bit like winter on this pocket <clears throat> the colors look really bright and really intensive to mute that down a little bit i'm taking some white gesso again and i'm trying to blend those paper scraps a little bit I'm putting the gesso just to the edges of this paper scraps so that I get a really, really smooth and background looking look of this. <laughs> Don't know how to describe this. Hopefully that's ma that makes sense. Um, and then I let this dry really good. When this thing has dried really well, I'm taking my Stabilo oil pen in black. That's just a water-soluble pen. And I'm going around the single scraps on my little birdhouse here. I know in the camera you can't see that so well, but in reality, if you try that out, you will see that you still can see the edges of the scraps. And when I have finished that, I'm taking a water brush um, of course, you can also use a normal paintbrush and dip that into water to blend these black lines a little bit. I want to have something like a really abstract but three-dimensional look of this house um, that it looks like it is built out of really different stones or yeah, another mater material that look like stone. Do you know what I mean? It's a really abstract thing, I think. And... Um, here I think it looks already a little bit like art journaling but I really like to include those things into my project so hopefully you like it. After everything has dried, I would like to show you a way how you can get your pieces a little bit more vintage. Of course, you can leave them like they are now, but in this December Daily series, I would also like um, to try to show you some different variations of the same project. So let's try to get some brown ink to these little pocket house thingies. I'm just taking some Distress Oxide ink. Please don't be confused. I've just realized that my ink pad was really dry. So I've just put some drops of the refiller ink to my acrylic block. Of course, if you have a new ink pad or an ink pad that's full, you can just um, put the ink directly from the ink pad to your acrylic block. Uh, spritz some water and then just carefully dip this thing into this little um, ink uh, area there and 
um, shake this around a little bit. You can also add some more water or use your fingers to spread that out. You could also use a stencil to make a pattern to this. Um, I haven't done that here because otherwise um, that would have been too loud for my preference. But yeah, you know, you can play around, you can um, try out different things. And I can recommend if you have an ephemera idea and you want to try that out, then try to make several pieces of the same idea in different variations at the same time. Um, that's what I'm trying here because this way I can decide later which version is the best one for me and which one I like the best. Um, here we have different backgrounds. Um, different styles of these little houses and um, yeah they can be put into the same junk journal later because we will make them cohesive with some steps that we do on every peach uh, every piece Ooh, Louise <laughs> sorry uh, but um, they will be different but you can decide which version you like the best. If you only have one piece, then you only have one chance to, to give your best. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and if you perhaps make something that you um, totally don't like, then you perhaps can't um, fix this problem. If you have several pieces, you have more um, possibilities to play around. So um, for this bricks uh, thingies here I'm using some more water to um, spread the ink out a little bit so this way I think the bricks come out really really well and it looks really interesting I really like this thing here and I think I will make some more of this uh, version with the bricks um, then we have to let that dry of course and now um, our little birdies have to um, go inside of this house. I mean, they need a little entrance or something like that. They can't fly through the wall because they are not coming from the Harry Potter world. <laughs> so we are going to need something like an entrance. I'm using uh, this round die cut here. Of course, you can also uh, use some scissors and cut a round hole into your uh, pocket thingy. But with a die cut, of course, this is much easier. And um, the reason why I'm using my die cuts here is also because um, this is really new for me. I um, don't have so much die cuts. And yeah, if you know my previous videos, you know that I had some struggles with die cuts and some problems. <laughs> I needed you to explain me some things about die cutting and that's the reason why I'm using them here because I want to practice um, this the the work with this machine and the work with the die cuts and that stuff. Um, I think that's also a really important thing. If you have something that you have new and um, you haven't used it so often, um, try to um, include those techniques into your projects really often so that you have the chance to practice it. I think without practicing, um, it's not possible that you can get a really a beautiful result. Some of you um, write to the comment section that everything looks so easy when I do it in my videos and you write, oh, Luisa, you are so talented and that stuff. Of course, I'm really happy about that. But I want to say that not everything here is talent because there are so many things that need practice. And I think that's a really, really big point with junk journaling, ephemera and all this stuff. You need to practice the things so that you can be satisfied in the end with your result. To make this opening this entrance a little bit more three-dimensional and interesting i've just used a black uh, you know this art crayon by marabou perhaps you know the faber castell gelatos that also would be possible you can just smear that around with your fingers um you can also use the stabilo all pen for this step but it's much easier to use this crayon because 
it's a little bit thicker and you have a way easier job to apply this medium, um, especially to the edges of this pocket. You can just scribble over it, um, protect your desk like I'm doing this here with this little um, old book. And then you can just take your finger tool and smear that around and you will get a really blended effect to the edges of this thing. Um, you could use watercolor for this step, but that would be not the same. Um, it will be possible, but you will have a little bit other result than this. I'm not totally sure, but I think also birds get lettuce and happy mails and that stuff. Hmm. So I think those houses need some numbers so that the post birdie knows where to deliver the letters. <laughs> I'm crazy, I know. The bird in my head is really, really big and really loud. So let's give those numbers, uh, those numbers, those houses some numbers. I'm uh, just gluing them to a brown paper to make the frame around the numbers match the rest of the colors. And then I cut them out and go around with my black crayon again to make that pop out a little bit more and it will match the rest way better. So you will see that in a second. But first, you will see the next letters for my giveaway. So here is one. There are following two more. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, and if you never heard about this giveaway, perhaps this is the first video of this series that you are watching, please check out the info box. Every information that you need to enter this giveaway is down below. You can still enter. This giveaway runs until December 25th. So uh, if you want to win something really cool, then please read the info box. Okay, so let's glue this down. I think that looks really cute. And in this stage, I thought, oh, how can I explain that? This already looks really uh, like something that goes into an art journal. I know those definitions between, uh, uh, of, oh, Louise, I know those definitions of junk journal and art journal and that stuff. Mm, are really close to each other and sometimes it's hard to find differences. My channel is called Junk Journal Art and if you know me, you know that I try to get those art journal things into my junk journal projects because I really enjoy that. This project for me, for my personal emotion, is really, really art journaling. <laughs> is that a word? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so... Um, I'm trying to get this effect out a little bit more by adding some lace to the top of the pocket or this house, uh, see it like you want it. Um, I really enjoy mixing those different um, textures to my project. Um, junk journaling is also some kind of mixed media. I mean, yeah, if you look up for mixed media, for example, Wikipedia Wikipedia says um, uh, mixed media is mixing different mediums. If you search on YouTube for mixed media, you will find all of those canvases and really uh, dimensional tags and that stuff. But junk journaling in its original way is mixed media as well. And if you have... Um, understood that 
making ephemera can be really really easy because as you can see you can use so many different things to make this more interesting a little bit overloaded perhaps um, so that the eyes have something to explore on every single piece and that's also the reason why i am trying to attach some feathers here now um, these feathers i got in a local um, dollar store um, and this material is really cool because it has a little wire in between of the feathers and in um, yeah, some areas there are um, two feathers, as you can see, at the same place, and they are attached to this wire so that you can just cut that. And one possibility to attach that is to bring it through the lace. The other way is to make um, some holes, just tiny holes into your pocket and then put the wire through them. Um, attach it on the back side and then the feathers will stay there. I think that's a really cool way um, to attach feathers um, when you don't want to use any glue. If you like this idea of today, I have a little surprise for you because there's a freebie for you as well today. Please check out the info box for the link. I have made some kind of a template for you so that you can print that out and have a base that you can decorate like you want it so it's such a little um, bird house pocket as well and you can use it to decorate it like you want it so hopefully you will enjoy this and um, yeah so i think these feather feathers make this whole thing way more interesting and in the last step, I would like to add some sentiments. And this thing with the sentiments is such a crazy thing for me because mm, every time when I see someone adding such a sentiment to a project, for me, the project is way more complete than without the sentiment. But... If you are a beginner and you ask, oh, how can I learn techniques to make beautiful ephemera for junk journaling? I can't say add a sentiment to every piece of your ephemera. I mean, do you know what I mean? That would make no sense. It's not a rule or something like that. But I like to add sentiments where I think mm, that they match my emotions. Sometimes... I find um, some sentiments in magazines or um, even in the internet or somewhere else or I write down some with my own handwriting and I need this emotion to put that to my ephemera piece, otherwise it will not be perfect in my eyes. Um, these little things here made this whole thing so, yeah, I think it's way more cute than without those th sentiments. but. Yeah, of course, it's a personal preference. Some people like to um, add a plain label. That also would be a really cute possibility. Then you could write a date or a caption or whatever you want when you have put that into your junk journal later. And yeah, you will have the possibility to write something down on a plain label. I think that would also look good. And another thing that I like to do is here, I would like to um, splatter some white gesso because I think the birdies come to life with white splatters. I don't know how to explain that because this is also an emotional thing. If you don't like splattering because, yeah, you know, the paint is everywhere but not there where you want it. <laughs> <laughs> then you perhaps would say, okay, I, I will not do that. But um, if you want to try new things and you've never done that, try to splatter around your birds and you will see that they begin to live. It looks like they want to fly away in the next second. So, yeah, <laughs> hopefully that makes sense. I hope you like this project. Now we can take these pockets and glue them on three sides i mean the left side the right side and the bottom so that we can put a journaling card uh, into those pockets and you will see a part of the journaling card through this little hole that we've made i hope you like this and please don't forget to check out the channel of 49 dragonflies today 
she has also an idea on today's prompt and I'm really excited what she will create today. She, I'm sure she has the most amazing ideas with this prompt list. So yeah, check that out and watch her video as well. See you tomorrow. Bye bye.